Welcome back to D20 Tactics. On this channel, I play Dungeons & Dragons with my friends. We explore combat scenarios and play out the tactics used to defeat monsters quickly and safely, giving you more time to get back to roleplaying. I'm your host and Dungeon Master, Sarson Zero, and today I'm joined by Blind Oracle, Azure Wolf, Merrick of War, and Fear No Equal. Together we'll run through typical battles that adventurers might see playing Dungeons & Dragons. This is the second encounter of a demonic incursion, so if you missed the start, you can find a link to it in the description below. Grab your dice, draw your sword, and let's jump into combat. Hit points, ability, spells, items, and hand. 155 up to 202 hit points. Our great axe plus two in hand. We have two indomitables available. 122 out of 122. Full charges, all both wants still. Spell slots remaining. Four first, three second, two third, three fourth, one fifth, one eighth. Simulacrum is 50 out of 50 HP. Four first level spells. Three second, three third, three fourth, one fifth. 1-8. 170 HP out of 170. Warhammer and a plus 2 shield. 2 turn undeads. 4 level 1 spells. 2 remaining level 2 spells. 3 level 3 spells. 2 remaining level 4. 2 level 5. No remaining level 6s. 1 level 7 and 1 level 8. 169 out of 169 HP. Holding a plus 2 shortbow using plus 1 arrows. 7 charges left on the instrument of the bards. Anyone have any spells carrying over from the previous encounter? The rogue has fly. I have fire resistance from a potion. I have a familiar and a simulacrum. The effects of aid and hero's feast continue. Monsters, abilities, items, and numbers. This encounter has eight gorilla demons. Gorilla demons are big and powerful, demonic resistances to cold lightning and fire, immune to poison, blind sight up to 30 feet, so that might cause some problems for the rogue. Passive perception of 15, maximum perception of 25. Rogue, you're gonna have to roll for these in case they make active checks. They can cast a couple of different spells. They're reckless, meaning they can get advantage on their attack rolls and then give you advantage to attack them back. Multi-attack, they have two hands and one mouth to punch and bite you with, and there's eight of them, and that's going to help. Do we know what spells they have? They have Entangle, Phantasmal Force, Disguise, Self, and Invisibility. Yeah, they don't have, like, any AoE or anything. Well, there's eight of them that kind of do terrain and effects. The upper deck of this engine is quite similar to the lower deck of this engine. The yellow area, that's the ground, it's moving past you. Should you end your turn in it, you will move ten squares backwards. If this puts you underneath the engine, you're going to take 10d6 bludgeoning damage. The orange areas, they have cannons mounted to the top of the abyssal engine. Cannons absorb truly anything you put inside of them. Should you be placed atop one of them, or decide foolishly to stand atop one of them, the abyssal arms will grab out of it, try to load you into the top, and fire you out. If that happens, then you will be shot 500 feet away from it, taking 10d6 fire damage and 10d6 bludgeoning damage. To avoid this, it's like a grapple check. It's a DC 17 athletics or acrobatics check to avoid getting loaded into the the cannon. And then the skulls again are on fire, so if you stand atop one of the skulls and you're going to take 66 fire damage. After that, we're going to go to tactics. What do you guys think for tactics in this fight? So obviously this is a Spirit Guardians kind of fight. AoE as available. I wish we could load them into the cannons, but they're easily going to make that athletics check, unfortunately. I wouldn't be so surprised about that. I think if the opportunity presents itself, you give it a shot. These are Bargara. I'd have to blow an entire action grappling one, move it over there, and then it's going to roll like a five and pass that check. You don't have to grapple it. Anything that pushes them into that area. So, for example, if you had a wind fan, you could wind fan them in. I haven't used that thing in forever, right? And how did it <laughs> go last time we tried to use it on a Barbara. <laughs> Just trying to figure out what type of AoE to use, if any, but I don't think I've got much options here. Do we want to just sit in this narrow little hole and let them come at us? I don't think they have meaningful, like, ranged options, so it's not like we're going to be subject to a barrage here. These are all low walls. They're not totally encompassing. They could just stand over the top of them and punch down. Or grab us and go load us in a cannon. Then, in that case, we've got to keep them from doing that to some of our people. Do we have any mobility lockdown? Can you do the resistance of one more time? Fire, lightning, and cold. Oh, well, there goes Kona Cold. <laughs> I could try and throw in Tangle. Would have been a great time to have reverse gravity loaded. I mean, I could turn somebody into a giant ape. Because that's what this fight needs, is a ninth ape. You say that like it's a bad thing. I said it sarcastically, but I actually mean it sincerely. I put these eight apes in their place. Apes strong together. Break ape. With bigger ape. I have a lantern revealing in my inventory. Is that something I could just set up on the ground and have it shine out? Yeah, if you just want to set it up on the ground, then you're good. It just won't move with you. What plane are we on? You are on the Prime Material plane at the moment. Banishment time. If you upcast banishment, it targets multiple targets. 
Uh-huh. That's what I'm just sitting here. I'm like, ah, oh, I think I just found the answer. I've also got a lantern of revealing. If we just drop two of them at the front, we should be able to cover a lot of ground there. So it'll reveal in a 60-foot radius. That's the whole deck. I mean, it's only 30 because we're not really going to get them 30 feet away from each other in practice. 30-foot radius of bright light, and the invisible creatures and objects are visible as long as they're within the bright light. Blind Oracle is correct that there is an additional 30 feet of dim light, but that's not necessarily going to help. But yeah, a 60-foot diameter does cover pretty much the whole deck. I would say be aware that a thing set down on the ground and not being held is not being attempted, so they might steal it. It's fine. We have so much money. Okay, let's roll some action. What if I hold the lantern down with my immovable rod? <laughs> yes! That would do it. Of course, then your immovable rod would be unattended. <laughs> and that's expensive. No, nope, same cost. <laughs> exactly the same price. Anybody have higher than a 20? Anyone have between a 20 and a 15? 19. 17 on the wizard. Anyone have between a 15 and a 10? I have a 14 on the gorillas. It would be a 14 for the cleric. Who's got between a 10 and a 5? 7 on the fighter. Ow. Six. Rogue, you're up first to start us off. Bonus action to hide behind the cleric. It's a 33. And then take a shot at the one you are hovering over currently. A 30 to hit. 30 hits. 41 points of damage. That's my turn. After the rogue, we go to the wizard. Banishment, level 5. The one north of that and the one just west of that. Charisma, 18. Front north gets a 1 on his charisma save, so he disappears. Blue slot on the magic the gathering wheel. Gets a zero on his charisma save, and he disappears. Did you seriously screw up the Magic the Gathering wheel? No, this is white, blue, black, red, green. I mean, sure, if you rotate it 90 degrees. He rotated it 90 degrees. It's fine. That's the top of the triangle. Look at how they're all phased. I'm done with you. After that, the other wizard. <laughs> Eighth level banishment. So is that going to be five? For every level above four, so you get one more. Are we going to go for everyone except the one the rogue shot? Yep. Top stairs is going to get a 14. He gets banished. Back stairs. He's going to get a 13. He's banished. Bottom stairs. He gets a three. He's banished. White on the Magic the Gathering star. He gets a seven. West of the two remaining. Gets an 18. Passes. Also holding for a minute. So all we got to do is protect the wizards. After that, I got two gorillas. We have a 40-foot move. This guy's going to run over here. Here's the bite attack. 26 to hit. Does hit. 11 points of piercing damage. DC 10 concentration save. That is exactly 10. Then we're going to grapple him with one of our fists. Athletics or acrobatics at your option. Uh, that is a 23. I got a 17, so that will pass. And then the second fist attack, I'm going to try to grapple you. So that's a 15. I got an 11, so that will not be grappled either. Go over here. We're going to attack with the other one. Here's the bite attack. 12 to hit the... Simulacrum. Miss. 26 to hit with a fist. Will hit with a fist. 12 points of bludgeoning damage. Alright, that is a 14. And then the final fist is an 18. It's a miss because I'm going to shield. And those are my guys. After that, we're going to go to Cleric. Walk up to the closest one. Just hit it with the Warhammer here. 21. 21 hits. Divine Strike here. 15. So I will cast Spiritual Weapon again. 28. 28 hits. 7. After the cleric, we go to the fighter. Curve around the bandit north of me, and then we're going to attack Eastern Pagura. Crit with an 18, reroll the damage die number one. That's still bad. 15 damage. Second attack, that is an 18 to hit for 10 damage. Third attack, that's a whiff. Rolled a two. For a total of 14. That's a miss. All right, then. After the fighter, we go to the owl. I'm going to give the one that's six in damage the rogue advantage and slide back over to the other side. After the owl, we go to the rogue. Let's go ahead and use that advantage on that first shot. Well, there's the crit. Oh, wasted crit. Right. I don't know. It's keeping the banishment up. That's true. I do get to throw 18d6 at this problem. Good lord. 79 points of damage. That guy drops. Move, hop the railing, bonus action, hide. You will stealth roll. 25. 25 will do it. Wizard. I knew what I would do, but in this campaign it doesn't work that way, because I would normally run downstairs and just play hide away at this point. Absolutely works. You want to disengage and run? Should have did it before, but I didn't think about it. He gets a 20 to hit you. <sighs> Shield. Dashing to get as far away as I can. After that, we're going to go to the simulacrum. He's going to be the hard one. Oh, he's already reacted, so yes, run. Yeah, because he's the more important one. He's got the most. <laughs> After that is the gorilla demon running out of hit points. We're going to stuff a cleric in a cannon. Cleric, give me a acrobatics or athletics check to avoid the grapple. 20. I got an 8, so that'll pass. Second one. That'll be a 23. I got a 19. That'll pass. No cannon for you. All right, he's just going to bite you then. I got a crit. Fair enough. Take 16 points of piercing damage. That's my gorilla's turn. After the gorilla demon, we go to the cleric. All right, let's wail on him back. Start with the warhammer. hammer. 24. 24 hits. It's going to be 6 bludgeoning and 11 radiant. 17 total. Bonus action, we'll use the spiritual weapon. 
26. Hits. For a 9. That'll be it. After that, we go to the fighter. Attack number 1. That is a 16. We'll hit for 14 damage. Attack number 2. That is a 24. We'll hit for 16 damage. Lethal. You can come back now. Report hit points remaining. 169 out of 169 hit points. 154 out of 170. 155 out of 202. 111 on the wizard. Simulacrum is 35 out of 50. This is the first short rest, so are there any pre-rest actions you guys want to take? Do you want to use any hit dice during this short rest? Fighter is using 5 and gaining 47 to max hit points. I am using 2 hit dice, gaining 7 health. Does anyone have any post-rest actions they wish to take? Pearl of Power. Using a Pearl of Power to regain a third. I am doing Arcane Recovery and I am gaining a... 5th level slot and a first. So you have 8 levels worth of spells to recover? You just told me about 6 of those levels. No, it's not worth it, unfortunately. So you're not going to do Arcane Recovery? Yeah. Anyone else have post rest actions they want to do? I'd like to take the opportunity to pop that Potion of Heroism right now. 10 more temp HP and bless running constantly. Wizard is recovered and the control compartment of the engine is breached. The adventurers are going to go on there and see where this thing is headed. 2 encounters down, 4 more to go before the long rest. Thank Thank you for stopping by, and I hope you'll join us next week as the adventure continues. I'm Sarson Zero, and I will see you next time.